was the totalitarians were working their will upon Europe. 600 officers of the Swiss Army gathered at Ritley Meadow on the shows, shores of Lake Lucerne. Now, Ritley Meadow is an area that is considered sacred in the history of the Swiss nation. I think it should be considered sacred in the history of free men and women everywhere. It was on August 1st of 1291 that the leaders of the three Swiss cantons gathered in Ritley Meadow to create the Swiss Confederacy for mutual defense. In July of 1940, the top leadership of the Swiss Army had been gathered to Ritley Meadow by the commander-in-chief of the Swiss military, General Henri Guisson. They'd been brought there because the central government in Switzerland was making noises about a potential accommodation with the Nazis. And it looked as if Switzerland was going to go the way of so many other nations that had been basically bluffed into surrendering their liberty and their independence by the threat of Nazi aggression. So General Gieson drew the 600 top leaders of his military to Ritley Meadow. They knelt in prayer, and then General Gieson gave one of the most stirring speeches of which we have record. He warned his gathered military leaders that uh, Switzerland was surrounded and its prospects were quite grim. Accordingly, he said, I decided to reunite you in this historic place, the symbolic ground of our independence, to explain the urgency of the situation. The survival of Switzerland is at stake. Currently there are, beyond our borders, more troops and excellent troops than ever before. We can be attacked on all fronts at the same time, which was not really conceivable a few weeks ago. General Gieson had set the stage for this meeting by issuing the following directive to his military command. If by radio, leaflets, or other media any information is transmitted, doubting the will of the Federal Council or of the Army High Command to resist an attacker, this information must be regarded as lies of enemy propaganda. Our country will resist aggression with all means in its power and to the bitter end. Everywhere, General Gieson told those who were gathered at Ridley Meadow, the order is to hold it is the duty of conscience of each fighter, even if he depends on himself alone, to fight at his assigned position. The riflemen, if overtaken or surrounded, must fight in their position until no more ammunition exists. Then cold steel is next. Here, soldiers of 1940, we will inspire ourselves with the lesson and spirit of the past to envisage the resolution of the present and future of the country, to hear the mysterious call that pervades this meadow, to defeat his propaganda, everyone should oppose the spirit which animated the mountain folk, who in 1291, when left to themselves, placed their confidence in themselves and in God. Thus will the country be strong and the army quite ready. One order is ample, hold fast. Now, in World War I, General Kaiser Wilhelm made a brief stop in Switzerland as he was sizing up the prospects for a potential move by Germany against the Swiss. As he was speaking with the Swiss militiamen and inspecting border fortifications, the Kaiser said to the Swiss militiamen, what will you 250,000 Swiss militiamen do if tomorrow 500,000 Germans come streaming over your border? The Swiss militiamen fixed the Kaiser with a steely-eyed stare and said, each of us will shoot twice and go home. And that's the answer of a free man from a free society that understands the role of firearms the right to keep and bear arms in a free society. And in the spirit of Rutley Meadow, in the spirit of Lexington and Concord and Independence Hall, it is necessary for Americans to protect the right that protects all others. And in order to do so, it is necessary that we understand the rule of law and the concepts embodied in our Constitution. We have to understand how, in our society, government does not have monopoly on the legitimate use of force. But just as important as that understanding is the understanding that it is not enough to be armed, to know how to use weapons and defensive rights that you do not adequately understand. And it does little good to understand the nature of your rights if you don't understand the nature of law as a protector of those rights, a law that will govern both the government and the governed. Americans are citizens who should be governed. We must never be subjects who are ruled. And in order to prevent America from sliding into the abysm of tyranny that has devoured so many other nations in history, to protect our independence against the encroachments of a UN-dominated New World Order, it is necessary that people organize and take effective, concerted action based on sound principle.